Hi, my name is Chris Richards, and I have just sat down for an incredible interview, which covered confidence building, overwhelm, procrastination, perfectionism, you name it. So my name is Chris Richards, I'm the Hypno Coach, and I work with women to empower them to build their confidence and make them better versions of themselves, uh, that they get to decide what that is. So if you want to listen to it, please tune in to this podcast with me, Chris Richards, and Prosper. Thank you very much. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got none other than Chris. Chris, how are you doing, my man? I'm very well, thanks, Prosper. Thanks so much for having me. Great stuff. Now, I would have gone in with Chris is the ladies' man, but obviously his job <laughs> is, to help, is to help women in business so they can actually renew their confidence and re rediscover their true power. Now, they... Um, you know, after working with Chris, they get to overcome all the self-doubt, all the stress, whatever overwhelm they might have and become the most effective versions of themselves. Now, Chris, every man is dying to know how you do this. Can you elaborate on what, what you actually do and how it all works out? Well, uh, well, thank you for the introduction, Prosper. Um, let's see how I do it. Uh, a lot of the how comes down to, uh, I do coaching, I do hypnotherapy, uh, hypnosis. Uh, I do a great deal of different things, but my, the, the power behind it is that I've always grown up with women. So I've always had women around me. And because of that, uh, I've always learned to think as a woman thinks and speak as a woman speaks. Now, that means that I connect very easily with women. And, and when they say something, I hear what they mean which is what a lot of guys kind of miss out sometimes. Because, uh, you know, guys are, guys are very clearly spoken. If we're, if we're hungry, we say, I'm hungry. I, I want a sandwich. <laughs> yeah. But a, a woman, uh, and any women listening to this, they'll, be, they'll, they'll, they'll enjoy this, I think. If a woman's hungry and, he's, and she's got a man there, she'll most likely say, she'll most likely ask, are you hungry? <laughs> Why do they have to be so cryptic? I mean, all right. I want to sell it. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, uh, and obviously this is very general because uh, what I've found actually is that a lot of women who grow up with men, so especially ones who grow up with lots of brothers or have lots of uh, boys as friends in school, they actually tend to think more like guys. They speak more like guys because they're used to it. They've kind of adapted to that situation. So they will uh, very often say exactly as men will say it, which is, I'm hungry, I want a sandwich. <laughs> All right. Okay. So obviously in the business world, if you're not going to convert a client and tell them, okay, sir, this is where you sign the dotted line. How then does mm -hmm. that compare? Because if they can't say, I'm hungry, do you want a sandwich? And they're not really direct and open. How do you help them now start conversing in the way that people that actually sign the dotted line understand? Oh, bloody, wow. Great question. Um, okay. So most women don't want to be told. Guys will be happy. If, if I were to say to, to, to you as a guy, um, I will teach you how to be a stronger, uh, more confident guy. Yeah. Most guys will be like, yeah, okay. I'm okay with that. That's fine. You know, it's, it's especially if we can put our ego to one side. Uh, it's, you know, it's fine. Yeah, a bit, a bit of man, manliness with men. We don't, don't have to do that. But women won't want to be told. They won't want to be taught so much. Generally, like I say, it's very, very general. Generally, they won't want to be taught. They'd, they'd prefer to be guided. You know, they're facilitated. So the way I word it is that I facilitate their journey. So I facilitate their ability to find themselves, to find their best version of themselves and become that, actually act on it, actually live a life where, where they are confident and where they are assertive, where they can deal with conflicts. So obviously in this world that we're living in, um, women are subjected to certain 
um, you know, expectations of society and that mm-hmm. jeopardizes their output of work. Okay. How then do you work with somebody who is sort of just starting out in business as a woman and just let us know your process of how you actually help them instill that confidence of dealing with what the business world actually looks like. Well, that's actually a fantastically way you worded that question because it's, uh, you're right. Social conditioning is really prominent in women, uh, especially in business. A lot of women, like, okay, let's go back to children. Uh, it is relevant, but let's go back to children. Boys are kind of taught to uh, adventure, to, you know, to be boys, you know, get muddy, do all that good stuff. Girls are taught to be good girls. So a boy, you know, boys get good boy points for, you know, just sitting at the table and not making a mess. Girls, there's a much higher demand on them. There's much higher expectation on them, even from school children in a lot of cases. So a lot of women grow up with this need to be a good girl. Um, And that is extremely damaging uh, to a lot of people without them even realizing it's happening. They want to please. They want to... Uh, even in relationships, they want to please their man. They want to they want to be a good wife. You know, a good girl turns into a good wife. Uh, you know, what would a good wife do? So they get kind of forced into this idea of what they think or what they've been taught a good person should be. Now, when you put that to business, what is a good businesswoman? Now you're into some trouble. Now that you have a potential for trouble, because now you've got, well, a good businesswoman is strong and a good businesswoman is assertive and a good businesswoman is this and that and this and that. And because they're so worried about, I say generally, because a lot of them are very worried about how they'll be perceived. You know, will they be perceived as being good? Will they be perceived as being a credible expert in their field? in their industry and because they get very wrapped up in that i mean guys get wrapped up in that as well no no doubt guys this this would be like yeah i I have that as well i i want to be seen as credible i want to be reputable um because they get wrapped up in that they forget their absolute power and the power comes uh when they just work out to be the best version of them because I've, i've seen women who are quiet and they are killing it in business. Really quiet and shy, generally. Really, and, and very introverted as well, you know. It takes them a lot of energy to be around people. Um, but a lot, I've seen a lot of women like that who are killing it. Mm, yeah. And likewise, because cause a lot of the time, you see women on TV, you know, like uh, uh, Michelle Obama, um, you know, all these really powerful women, and you look at them, and you think, wow, they're really powerful. They just exude confidence. They're all this. They're, they're, they're smart. They're, they're intelligent. They're, they're confident. They're, they're outgoing. They're great with people. Yeah. Now, because a lot of people, men and women, get into this comparison mentality, they say, well, in order for me to be successful, I have to be that. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. And you see what, see what the problems are occurring there. Mm, that you know, whole cause, comparison cause, and you, you always feel inadequate. I mean, obviously, l- look at this scenario, Chris. Um, I'm obviously, we, we're two guys here sitting and discussing women, all right? There's not even a woman in sight. So yeah. <laughs> that should tell you about what the whole uh, scenario is all about. And me coming in from, from Africa, where normally women are not sort of treated as equal as men are, um, I, I find it very hard to, 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 to sort of accept that. But also, I think naturally, women have made themselves submissive. No matter how hard they try, there's just going to be certain things that would never match up. Okay, you talked about women in TV. Have you ever seen a news anchor who is a lady with gray hair? But you would always see a, a news anchor who is a man with gray hair and that exudes wisdom, that exudes confidence, that exudes... Right, 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 yeah. 
But if it's a lady with gray hairs, nobody wants a fecal old woman. All right. So there's, there's just certain things like that. Now, how do you then circumvert things like that? Because it's all over the place. It's, it's in the media. Um, there's, right. you know, there's, there's, there's industries that are built to make sure women always feel inadequate. You know, lipstick, um, mascara. All of those things. How then? How's your process? How do you then? You know, take a woman well, to actually what, accept who they are. Sure. What What I think you're talking about there is uh, social convention, and this this is actually part of the problem because uh, there's so many people trying to be exactly what others want them to be. You know, uh, you, you're actually quite right. I can't think of a, a woman who is you know, grey-haired or whatever. But I can think of people like Julia Childs. I can think of people who uh, who are older and are still making a real impact in the world. I can think of those people. So I think the way we get around that, because as you, as you pointed out, another problem is, well, let's take a, a woman in business who uses their sexuality who exudes sexuality. That's an interesting one. Because if you see someone on TV who doesn't show any, then she's a prude. If you show, see someone who is using that, saying, look, I'm smart, I'm beautiful, I'm sexy, I'm okay with that. You know, that's not why you buy from me. You, know, you buy from me because I know what I'm doing. Yeah? And... But if she does that, many people, especially guys, um, sorry, guys are simpler, especially guys, <laughs> take one look at it, make their judgment, because we're very visual creatures, you know, we're the hunters, essentially, um, to a certain extent. And we take one look at it, we make our snap judgment. We say, well, that is because, and then we fill in the gap. In order for the world to change, it does need to be in two parts. Uh, as you very well pointed out there, as you alluded to, the women need to start being themselves. There's an old quote, I forget uh, who said it, or I'm probably going to, I may need to paraphrase it, but it says, ask not what the world needs, only be passionate in who you are and what you're doing. Because what the world truly needs is people who are passionate in themselves and what they're doing. Right. I love, I love that quote because it, it, it shows absolutely what women and men should both be doing. Be passionate in who you are, know who you are. And if you don't, if you're trying to rediscover it like that kind of know who you are, fine, create who you are, put it in that terms, build who you want to be, you know? Um, but there needs to be a change in men as well in the perception of men because I've worked with some women who are absolutely incredible. They are able to do all kinds of things and, and think in ways that, that men can't. And likewise, some men can think in ways that a lot of women can't, but it's, but to put one above the other is never a good idea. Right. I, I always prefer to think of it as a, uh, a partnership, a dance. Men bring a certain characteristics to the table. Now, when I say men, I also include women who think like men. Yeah, the ones who are raised with boys. Right, right. Uh, women bring something completely different to the table. When it comes to business in particular, um, or anything for that matter, uh, guys will be very outcome driven. If I say, let's go get dinner, straight away, the guys will be thinking, oh, cool. Where are we going? How far will it be? What would be the cost implications? You know, we're, we're, we're getting right to the end. We're saying we are at A. We need to get to B. What is the difference? Great stuff. Great. Now, so a lot of women can think in those terms, but women are very journey focused. So we'll get lost. We'll get kind of lost in the detail of the end result whereas they can be much more perceiving as they go. And because of that, they'll pick up things that we would miss. They'll pick up opportunities that we miss. Um, so, yeah, it's very much a partnership. I, I, I do understand. I mean, obviously, 
um, you know, the stores like Ikea, um, you know, that, that you buy flat packs and then you have to fix it. And normally you're fixing it with the, with the wife. All I do contributing to that uh, scenario is just buy a beer and let her do it because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, because you can you can never win that argument, especially if if things are linear. So, like you're saying, I mean, they they they're more focused on the journey and things like that. Now, we've talked about how you know you 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 help them with the confidence, and obviously, I really like that quote that you put across about passion and them, you know, bringing themselves out there like that. Now, let's say some lady has sort of been living under the cloud and they've been wearing a mask because society has been um you know putting them down like we all know when they knock on your door what's the first thing that you work on them and how do you sort of get them from where they are like you said to the journey up until their successful business person with a business that's profitable and enjoyable i do what every man should do <laughs> when they when whether it be in business or trying to attract them in the nightclub I do what every man should do, which is the first, the very first thing I do is I listen to them. Okay. I get an understanding of where they are right now. I get an understanding of who they believe themselves to be right now. I get an understanding of their hopes, their dreams, their desires. I get an understanding of how they word things. Uh, I'm listening intently to how they word something because a lot of the time that will give it away later on. Like, does their facial uh, expression change? Uh, you know, does their, uh, when, when they talk about different things, does their voice tonality change when they're talking about themselves in comparison to other people? I'm listening intently to every little detail. I listen with my eyes as well. And that's one of the most important things. Uh, and what I mean by that is, uh, it is uh, hopefully, if you're, if we have viewers as opposed to listeners here, um, you know, if you, I put my hand on my chest, I say, oh, I, I, I just feel, I feel like it's just too much. Well, that tells me where in their body they feel stress. Yeah, if they're putting their hand on their chest, or if they put their hand on their forehead, on their head, and they go, oh, I feel like it's just too much. Yeah, that tells me where it is. So now, as we go through the conversation, the first step is always to listen. The first step is always to strive to understand them. Because every single woman on this planet is, is different on a very intrinsic level, so different on a, on, a, on a subconscious level. They all have different configurations. Think about it like that for the guys. There's a different configuration for every woman. There, is, there are no two that are exactly alike, and that's why I love women. A lot of guys can't see that. They see pretty woman, pretty woman, pretty woman, pretty. Like they just see different women. They don't see the person underneath. Um, so yeah, the first step is always to understand. All right. Always. Or strive to understand. Strive to listen. Take notice. All right. This is where you get. In fact, in fact, interestingly, one for the guys, especially those in relationships who uh, who would like to close communication with their partners a bit better. If you have a woman or a wife who uh, who says things like, you never listen to me, you never understand me. I don't know if guys would ever complain about this. I don't know if you ever get that at all. Um, you never listen to me. Why don't you ever listen to me? Why don't you ever uh, understand what I have to say? It's because they're not paying attention. They're not paying attention to um, the guys. They're not paying attention to the way she communicates. A lot of a lot of the time, you know, they'll they'll just see her going about her life because a lot of guys will only see surface level because that's all they send out. That's all they that's all they read coming in. Yeah, if I'm hungry, I say I'm hungry. If I'm tired, I say I'm tired. If I'm laying down with my eyes closed, that's an indication of I'm tired. Yeah, right. I mean, right. We, guys make it very obvious how they feel. Okay. Women, it's much women is much more subtle, and if you can learn the subtleties of your spouse then you will have a much closer relationship. Great, great. Now, obviously in business, there's a lot of communication that has to be done linear, lateral, with other clients, with um, 
you know, uh, your, 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 your students maybe, or whoever it is that maybe that lady is supposed to be talking to within that space. Now, do they still have to be decoded or is there just a universal sort of language that they are supposed to, <laughs> to you know, because that's, that's how they then, you know, manage to do a lot of business. So a woman might be listening right now, somebody who's in my audience and thinking, okay, I'll just continue the way I speak to my husband, to my clients. Now, is that how, what they have in bed? Should they bring that to the bank? Um, so to speak. Yeah. The, when it comes to relationships, I always find that the best relationships between men and women, um, personally, are the ones where the woman has learned to speak man. Right. Very rarely do you get a man who knows how to speak woman. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why I don't worry about competition in the coaching industry. Like, it's fairly rare that guys know how to speak woman. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's see. Advice for women going into business... Uh, and advice for guys for women in business a lot of the time the ones who get there easier are the ones who can speak plainly uh who could who can speak like they would uh, uh their, their spouse in a very direct manner if they if they need a meeting done by a certain time say i need a meeting done you know if they if they need a document to be on their desk for a certain time you know don't don't play games in the hope that the person will uh, if it's a guy interpret the, the tonality of your voice, the micro expressions, you know, don't, don't rely on them being able to decode. The most successful women I see in business are the ones who can speak plainly. Right, exactly. Uh, and, and, for, and for guys, uh, for decoding, I would say help them. Uh, a lot of guys like, because uh, it's an ego thing, a lot of guys like to, to know. We like to know things. We just know. Yeah? We don't like to say, I have no idea what you're talking about. I would love, like, can you tell me that in a different way? Maybe I'm being stupid. Like, guys don't like to have that sort of vulnerability. Like, I don't know um, what it is you're trying to communicate there. Like, do you want this or do you want that? So guys can make it easier by saying, like, look, in order to communicate with me as an individual, speak plainly. Right. In a very nice and very, very respectful way, saying, look, I, I can't decode what you're saying and how you do it. I, my brain isn't that complicated, clearly. You know? <laughs> uh, like, help me out here. Great stuff. And, and so, you, so you create a middle ground and you work together. Like I say, it's a dance. In no dance that goes well, uh, one of them is dominant. It doesn't work. You know, the man, the man in, a, in a traditional waltz, let's say, takes leadership of the of the dance yeah but the woman is an equal just because you're a leader and a lot of people have this idea that leadership higher up uh, you're, you're you're better than you're not you're just leader you're just a manager and just like a dance a workplace i take great issue with bosses and managers believing they're higher than their workforce one of the things i strive to to teach uh people who work with me is it, is, especially in, in uh, old jobs where I was employed as a manager, uh, I used to say, look, I mean, if you think, because some people would be quite shy talking to me because I was a manager, I was their boss. Right. Uh, so I'd say, I was like, look, put it this way. If all of you left, like just decided to down tools and walk out, how much work would I be able to get done? And they're like, well, I guess nothing. Because, yeah, yeah you're, you're leading, you're advising, but we're the ones doing the, the small detail of the work. I'm like, exactly. Any leader who believes they are higher than their team is a very bad leader. They right. don't understand. If, if, in fact, John Maxwell says, if it's lonely at the top, you're doing it wrong. Great. Yes, Any yes, 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 yes. So you do, obviously you know, walk your talk. Um, in this last sort of sentence you talked about, you know, you know, asking the employees and especially if they were female, that if they were not there, how much would you get done? So that's sort of empowering them. But what if so. you can, you can go all the way empowering them, but that self doubt is always going to come back because they might be powerful at work, but they're still going to go back to some sort of, um, you know, emasculated um, you know, or, or patriarch. If, that if, if you can, that 
That's that's great. If you can show me someone who doesn't have self doubts, I'll show you someone who's a liar. Every single person on this planet, and one of these problems is that a lot of people believe that in order to be whole, they have to not doubt. They have to not have fears. They have to not have doubt their abilities from time to time. They have to not doubt the outcome of their task. You know, if I'm going to be truly successful, I have to have entire certainty that I'm going to be great at everything, you know, all this, and then never have a doubt again. I have never once met anyone who doesn't have doubts. And the idea that that someone might have doubts and that would be a sign that they're, they are maybe slipping back into an emasculated role, I believe is incorrect because it's exactly the fear of doubts that makes people feel like they're alone. That makes people feel like they can't ask advice and they can't ask for help. To feel like you're broken or feel like you're, there's something wrong with you. You're messed up. You're not normal. And guys have this too. I have guys. Although I, I'm not exclusively uh, a woman, a female empowerment coach, uh, I also work sometimes with men. Yeah, not ex- completely exclusive. It's just very rare. Um, I'm very picky when it comes to my male clients. But um, in order for someone to get ahead, the only difference is how much do those doubts control your actions? That is the only difference. Everybody has doubts. Every, I don't care if you're the world's greatest empowerment coach. I don't care if you're John Maxwell, Tony Robbins, uh, Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas and, John, uh, and Les Brown, you know, the kings of motivation and inspiration, in my eyes. Um, I guarantee you they have doubts. <laughs> I guarantee. In fact, I actually said to uh, one of my managers, he's actually, it was two levels above me. Someone stood next to me. They were saying that they were having doubts with their work. And I, and I knew it, this would be okay because I, uh, I knew the guy well. And I said, here, I'll t- change his name for the purpose of this. I was like, here, John, um, quick question. When was the last time uh, you had serious doubts about how good your work was? And he just looked up. He went, what, you mean today or this week? <laughs> That's all the time then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and the look on this, this it happened to be a woman, but it could quite easily have been a guy. Um, the look on her face was like, oh, my God. People one level above me and three levels above me are also having doubts about their work. Right. The only difference is they're not letting it stop them and they're doing the best they can. That's it. Great stuff. Obviously, obviously when the more the doubts start welling up, you now have the biggest urge to procrastinate and you know you you also want to become a perfectionist in the process what sort of advice do you yeah. give your clients or people that work with you that when that starts working do you have like a one trick or do you have like a step system that you walk them through so that you know you you bring them back to basics and tell them you you're not the only one <laughs> yeah, pro- uh, procrastination and perfectionism are by far the most complained about um, problems that people have. Uh, as long as I sort of lack of confidence, that kind of stuff, self-esteem. Uh, procrastination and perfectionism. Both are fear. That's all they are. So perfectionism, let me explain. Uh, perfectionism is the fear of, I'm going to do this and it's not going to be right. I'm going to do this and it's not going to be good enough. And because it may not, may not be good enough, you know, I'm not good enough. Right, right. And therefore, who am I to do it? And because they are looking five, six, seven steps ahead and seeing a negative outcome, they don't start. Non-starter syndrome is one of the worst things to happen to anyone in business or in life. Can you imagine people who look at, uh, who go out on the night, night out, guys or girls, doesn't matter. Look at that girl and go, there is no way she would have a drink with me. Right. Okay. There, so- is, there is no way. Like, what, what if I go up there and I talk to her and she laughs in my face? Oh, I just won't go up there. Now you're into procrastination. Procrastination is also a mix of, uh, it's not just fear, it's a lack of priorities. 
So, like, if I said that your children, if you have children, if listeners here have children, if they don't, imagine if you did, uh, or, or someone that you de- dearly loved, a child in your family who you dearly love, is in a house and you've just seen it burst into flames. Like, it's not roaring or anything, like, you're not guaranteed to die, but there is a fire and you can see your child in the window. I challenge you to find me a parent who wouldn't instinctively run in that run in that house. Yes, yes, that's that's quite possible. Or if, um, yeah, if if your kid is gonna go into some sort of harm or walk even in an open fireplace in the house and the kid is just wobbling around, absolutely, I've I've, I've jumped in to grab. Um, oh yeah, oh absolutely. Yeah. In fact, if someone asked me what's it like, quick tangent, but someone asked me what's it like to have a child. I said, it's a constant state of joy and a constant state of fear. <laughs> <laughs> Ima- imagine your heart is re- removed from your body, still keeping you alive, given arms and legs and no sense of danger. That right. is what it's like to have a child. Great. Because it's your heart. You know, if, it, if it goes to the top of the stairs, you're like, oh my God, if, that, if they get hurt, I get hurt, literally. Great. Uh, but, any- but anyway, yeah. Um, going back to the, the, the metaphor for the house burning, and putting that to a business or a life decision. If you think about what's important to you, the only thing to cure perfectionism and procrastination is is what's important to you more important, more impactful than the fear that's holding you back. Once a person understands that, they can get over procrastination and perfectionism. Because then it's a very simple tool, uh, very simple uh, formula to say, okay, what is it you want? What is it you're afraid of? And then you work to remove the friction. You work to remove the fear. Great. You say things like, oh, oh, if if I do this, then it will blow up my face. If I do this, uh, this work, this copywriting, this marketing, uh, it it won't be received well. Mm. I simply ask, where's the evidence for that? How do you know? Yeah, because you won't know if you don't try. Okay. Well, right, your, your, fear, your fear adds the detail. Right, right, right. Well, obviously, your job there, um, you know, your, your, your job there, Chris, is to actually help women in business and renew their confidence, as we've been talking, and actually really rediscover their true power. Um, they're going to be able to overcome their self doubt and a lot of stress. But with you know, putting together stuff, um, you know, what we're talking about, there is overwhelm that comes with all of this, dealing with the pressures of, let's say they are married, let's say um, they've got kids, they have a husband, they still got to clean the house and then still go to a business and function as if everything is normal, um, you know. Uh, how, the the, how the infamous that? to-do list. Yeah. Sorry? <laughs> the infamous to-do list. Right. As I say, a woman's work is never done. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, overwhelm again is one of the very com- common thing that people come to me to solve uh, or help them solve. I think it's a much better way of wording it. There's a very simple formula for overwhelm. If anyone ever wants to feel overwhelmed, I just don't think they would, but it's important to know this so that they can uh, go against it. If anyone ever wants to know the formula for overwhelm, it's very simple. You think about everything you need to do. You think about everything you need to do and all the details involved in doing each item. You then work out the impact of getting each thing wrong. You then do nothing. That is the formula for overwhelm. If anyone ever wants overwhelm, just do that. Just have loads of stuff. Be really worried about each individual thing and then take no action whatsoever or no real tangible action and you will have overwhelm. So if that's the formula, then we can build uh, an immunization from it, can't we? If that's what it takes to be overwhelmed, then to not be overwhelmed is its exact opposite. I often use the analogy, uh, the metaphor to say uh, people who are overwhelmed, very common, They'll do something like, it's like attaching a flag to a children's roundabout in a playground, yeah? And then, and then spinning the roundabout and counting how many flags you see. 
still that is won. what overwhelm does <laughs> yeah it's still one right it's still one but the first problem with people who are overwhelmed is it goes round and round in their head so okay so let's let's draw this out i'll give you the solution for overwhelm right now first thing first step get it out of your head and onto paper write a list don't write down write on a high level list don't write down details so if it's like uh the car the husband's and uh, work, a project at work, and house. Like, whatever it is, you write down a high level list, just get it out of your head and onto paper, so that you can actually see how many items it is. I actually had a very dear friend of mine call me up the other day, um, and she was in a total state of panic. She was, she was about to go into a very serious panic attack. Uh, in fact, she was halfway in already when she called me. Uh, first question was like, well, could you have called me sooner? <laughs> like, uh, maybe you can call me before the panic attack sets in, you know, just uh, just an idea. I said, well, all right, but let's let's look at this. Step one, get it out of your head onto paper. I have a pe piece of paper and a pen in front of me. Give me the list. One of the things that you're thinking about doing right now, and she gave me the list. It was house, job, uh, husband, work situation, kids, uh, schooling, and something else. I can't remember. I'm like, okay, step two, work through the list. Do not move on to numbers two, three, four, and five unless you are satisfied that num number one is done. So you go to step number one, and you say, right, what is that I'm worried about? Let's say it's uh, getting a new house. Let's say number one's a house or whatever. It doesn't, have, doesn't matter what it is. You go into the house, you go into number one, and you say, right, what is it I'm really concerned about here? What is my outcome? What do I want to achieve? And what potential things could stop me? And you just break it down. You deconstruct it. You say, right, well, okay, well, I'm worried about we won't, if I get this house, I won't be able to keep up repayments. Let's say it's something like that. Perfectly reasonable uh, concern. Right. Next step. How do you mitigate or reduce the risks? Well, if I save up or if I have this money from this, then I could deal with it. Perfect. Yeah? So then you're mitigating the risks, you're mitigating the danger. You're lowering the fire in the house so you can go in to save your child, so you can get what you want. Yeah? Hmm. The lower you can, the more you can lower those flames, the more likely it is you'll take action. Right. And as, as Tony Robbins says, and this is the last thing I'll say on this, we won't do this for every point, as Tony Robbins says, Never leave the scene of a decision without taking some action towards it. All right. I like that. So, yeah. So even if it's sending an email, making a phone call, do something that gets you closer to that goal. All right. Okay. So obviously, Chris, I mean, obviously this is a wealth of information. And I believe if the women that are probably watching this and the men um, are yeah. now really you know, ready to renew their confidence and they're actually ready to start rediscovering their true power and, you yes. know, that overwhelm that comes in with stress and, you know, self-doubt and you really are ready to take, you know, you know, to make yourself into the most effective version of who you're meant to be. Chris says it's figure outable. And Chris also says, once you've heard this, why don't you get him a call? Why don't you get on an email with him? Now, how can people get a hold of you there, Chris, so that they can, you know, um, get to navigate all of these things that we're talking about today? Perfect. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, there's a few different ways they could do. They could go to myhypnocoach.co.uk, myhypnocoach.co.uk. Uh, that's my website. You can contact me through that. No problem. You can also book an appointment, uh, a free session to go over anything you're going through and you'll just get guided through. Uh, all the sessions are no obligation and it's all about helping people. Or if you're on Facebook, look me up on Facebook. Connect with me. Uh, I think my URL is something like chris.richards01 uh, on Facebook. Or even better, especially if you're a woman, this is only open to women. Yep. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. You're out on this one. I've created a safe space community for women called Truly Empowered. It's also the name of my live Facebook live show that I do twice a week. Um, Truly Empowered 
search for truly empowered women only and you will find a group please get yourself added ladies and uh, in that group i also give free completely free group coaching once a week so not only am i dropping content and value in there i'm actually sitting down with women who are free at the time uh, i think it's like midday of my time so i don't know what time it is what time is it there for you um give or take Oh, you mean you mean like right now? Oh, it's almost ten p.m. Yeah, please. So almost ten p.m. Okay, yes. so yeah, so about nine p.m. your time, twelve my time. I sit down with all of the people. I do Facebook Live and I answer questions. Great. If they don't want to, if they don't want to out themselves, they can private message me and I'll raise it as a topic within the group coaching. Great stuff. Well, that was Chris, ladies and gentlemen. The aptly named ladies man his job is <laughs> to help women that are in business to actually renew their confidence and discover their true power now this has been prosper and i really really hope that this show has enlightened you especially if you're a woman who's just sitting on the fence and not knowing um, that your true power lies in you actually figuring stuff out and being open about who you want to be and there is people out there that, like chris that can actually help you chris thank you so much for taking your time i know it's father's day and you were busy but i stopped you on the motorway and there we are we just had a show thank you so much for for, for having us today thank you very much prosper it's been an absolute pleasure great stuff all right now if you've been watching this and you really want to get a hold of chris i'm going to put all his um contacts in the show notes in the bottom and if you haven't subscribed to this channel why not just hit the subscribe button <laughs> and then let's catch you on the other episode in the meantime enjoy the rest of your day and know that everything is figure outable and your business can actually be profitable and enjoyable thank you so much yada 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 and you know i'm the ladies man or whatever you want to put in there no no no, no. i don't need ladies man that's why i'm that's why i laugh when you kept calling me i was like oh my god no all right okay so